Simply Sherry writes, I love how clustered embellishments look on a layout, but when I try this technique, I quickly become overwhelmed. How do you know which embellishments to use and where to place them in the cluster to achieve that overall beautiful effect? Glittergal, can you help Simply Sherry create cluster consistency? Of course I can. The first thing I'm going to do today is instead of starting with a layout, I'm just going to work on some embellishment to just show you the different steps that I go through to make the little groupings or clusters of embellishment. So for this, I've tried to kind of um, come up with a little bit of an assortment to have on my desk. So I emptied out some new things. This is the die cut pack from the Amy Tangerine Ready, Set, Go. There's lots and lots of bits and pieces in that one and all different shapes and sizes there. So I've got that group. Um, also from that same collection I have the fabric sticker sheet and the big 6x12 which folds out so it's a 12x12 sticker sheet. So all three of those are from uh, Amy Tangerine Ready Set Go. Then I've also got some label stickers from October Afternoon, that's the 9 to 5 range, and the word stickers. They do both of these designs with each collection, so there's different color schemes available. Some plain journaling cards. These are October Afternoon punch-out journaling cards, but any, any journaling cards would do. I just um, grabbed a couple from my basket. Some other new bits. These are brand new in the store. They come in both plain and vellum, or pattern paper and vellum. They're from Jenny Bolin, and they're wired feathers, so you can bend them around, and they have different patterns. The paper ones have different patterns on each side, so those have some potential. Also from Jenny Bolin, the new flag tags in craft. They also come in white, but I thought I would pick up with that neutral and a little bit of brown, so I just grabbed the pack of Craft, and they come in three sizes in the pack, so you get the same three designs in small, medium, and large. A My Mind's Eye glittery die cut title, that's a little bit older, but there's always um, lots of different ones in the My Mind's Eye collections. And some older stickers, this was a Sassafras Sweet Treats sticker, and they did these with each collection where they had the same shapes but different uh, illustrations in those shapes. They're really good for layering if you still have those in your collection. And then the only other two things I know I'm going to use on the final page is I'm going to use this Haunted House ledger paper from the new October Afternoon Halloween collection called Witch Hazel. And this is the A side, so this is what you would see in the store and um, when you're shopping, and it's called Star Thistle. The back has this ledger paper that at the top says Haunted House, but if you look at the columns, it's like a normal ledger paper, except it says date, quantity, item number, potion ingredients, and magical implements. So I figured that was really, really um, apt to use with some Harry Potter pictures. So if you have um, Harry Potter dress-up pictures, anything like that and you'll want to grab that uh, star thistle from October afternoon and check out the rest of the witch hazel collection if you like scrubbing Halloween things and then I'm also going to use these uh, weekender letter and um, thickers they're chipboard squares I used these last time as well so they're little tiles a little bit like Scrabble tiles but updated and I'm going to use them in the blue with the cream lettering so I've got lots of cream here going on and I'm going to put these two elements aside for the moment and work on layering these embellishments. So what I tend to do is start with one piece and don't attach it to the layout and look at layers that I can add on top or underneath that particular starting point. So if I'm going to use a sticker, I'll quite often just go ahead and cut it out from the sheet so that I can try different things with it and not worry about needing to unstick it if I want to add something else so I can do a bit of planning. So I'm going to start with this large pinked circle and I know that my final version will be what's there as the sticker but for the moment I'm going to leave that edging around there just to get things plotted in place. So then I can start to look for things that would complement this shape. So let me clear this off a little bit. So with a circle element, it's good to then balance that with something that's not a circle, like a rectangle. So I can put it with one of the journaling cards, just check my options here, and I think that's probably the best bet. And because I'd already identified that I'm going to use brown 
tones in this. I'm going to start inking things with brown ink so that I can see how everything will come together. You can do that step at the end, but I just find it a lot easier to do coming together each step of the way. And then I can look for a few other elements um, to see what comes to mind. So, for example, I first started, I wanted to grab something smaller, so I picked up this flag tag. But this one has the red pinked circle printed right on there. So that's going to make it coordinate really well with a red pinked circle in another design. So I'm looking for items that are different but have some sort of similarity. In the same way, I've picked something that has this blue in it, so I really feel like I need to find something blue to add into that to complement it. So I'm going to have a look through the die cuts, and this one has both blue and the orange and red from that pattern. So this one is a really good candidate as well. Now, Obviously this was a, a single piece, so I want to include this at some point if I can, because I pulled that all out on its own. And then I'll have a look at the stickers here to see what might work best. Now with the blue here, and I've pulled in a bit of blue there, I will want a little bit more blue somewhere in the grouping, but I won't want the blue necessarily to be right on top of this blue, so it's it's nice to alternate colors or, or mix them up a bit. So if I was going for a tab here, which was my initial thought, I wouldn't go with the blue one here because I'd want to separate the color. So the yellow is a better choice to balance the color elsewhere. So just cut that apart from the sheet. And I can even fold it in half while it's still on the sheet. And then I can start to see how things will fit together. So I have this one here. And at the moment, I don't actually really worry about the lettering because I can always cover up this word if it doesn't end up working. And knowing that I'm going to be using Harry Potter pictures, I don't think that tomorrow is going to work. So I'll just plan on covering that up, and that's not a problem. Um, and I can have a look at what else is here things that might fit in with my Harry Potter theme. And I'm not quite sure that anything on this one works straight away. I'm thinking maybe a little camera, but because it's a small detail, it'll be in a top layer. So I'll leave it for the moment and come back to that. So I think I have enough here to get started and so I can start putting all these pieces together. So I'll start adding the ink. and I can start building how this will come together. And I can actually go ahead and tack things in place. So I'm adding this so that a little bit of that red pinked circle is going to show below, but this piece is going to overlap so that when it's all attached, I'll have this piece overlapping both this and this. So the more layers it can cover, the better the cluster will work together and so that it all feels like a unified um, moment. And then I don't want to have the just end. That's not, um, it's not required for where I'm going to go with the title. So I'm going to go ahead and add this over the top of that. And again, I'm covering up more than one layer at a time. I like to add a bit of dimension with the smaller layers as I, um, as I add them on top. So this one I can put some foam squares on the back to bring it up off that cluster a little bit and that'll make it a little bit more interesting. And I know that I'm going to add this tab here at the top so I can go ahead and take that off the backing. And these, you can um, get two tabs out of them if you would prefer to cut them in half and because obviously that's going to be flat on the page. Um, but you can just fold them over as well, just up to you, whichever you prefer. So I've started with that circle. I have a vertical uh, rectangular element and a horizontal. So that's really the start of a cluster that will work well and I can already see that I'd be able to add photos or journaling here in this space and it's going to work well on the page together. So then I can start to just frame that and work more pieces in. So for example it would be nice if I can put this underneath that little tag and at the 
bottom corner of the journaling box. And at this point I am just tacking things into place. So what I'm going to do is just fold over the backing paper so that I can start to attach this but I'm still not working on my background sheet just yet so I wanted to make sure that I can still move it around. There we go. So then I can just put the leaves underneath there. build out from there. So that gives me quite a bit of a, of a big clustered piece. So I have um, large elements and from here I could use this on the page just as is or I can start to add smaller pieces into that cluster to finish off the look. It just depends on how much detail you want and and how um, how many layers you like on your pages. It's a, completely a personal preference. So I'm going to add some small pieces and I was thinking I'd look back at this one and see what would work well in this circle. So once I have a, a general shape and then created a corner or a strip or something that's going to complement whatever page design I put it on, then within these pieces I start looking for little windows where I can add more. So I'm looking for a circular piece or something that could go inside this circle and I have a few options here on the sticker sheet. So I'm thinking I will try this one and as soon as I put that down you're gonna see that doesn't work in this case because it's just ever so slightly too big that I can't really see the red pinked circle anymore. So I'll try for something a little bit smaller and I have on that same sheet little green pie chart which will fit in the middle. And that gives me something that fits or I can look at things that might be a little bit of a different shape but would still fit in that gap. So the other option I want to try is the star. So I'll take the green circle off for just a moment and try the little green star. Now I've used stars throughout my Harry Potter album so I think that's the better choice this time. And maybe I'll add a gem or something on top because the star is quite small and flat inside that circle but it does fit. Once I have about this much, so I have a corner piece with some extra details and something to kind of give a little bit of curve or an opposing shape to the side, then the trick is to come up with something that can work well with this elsewhere on the page. So I'm going to leave that on my table so that I have something to go by as a, as a bit of a reference piece. And then I'm going to look for things that mimic the colors or the shapes or the textures there but won't be exactly the same and I'm looking to make a smaller embellishment with those same sorts of colors and elements. So for example I might look for something else that's cream and has lines but is a smaller journaling card so instead of the blue I have this orange one for example or there might be a better option but that's the first, ah, here's one that's even smaller. So this has lines and has the same colors, but is a smaller piece. And then I can start to look for other pieces that would go well with it. So I also have this orange arrow that would kind of, or orangey red, that would pick up those colors. And let's see if there's any more of these similar flowers in this collection. So I have some of those in sticker form here. And maybe fabric stickers? Not on this particular set. Okay, so to duplicate the flowers, the sticker bit is going to be my best option with what I have here. So I think I will cut out the blue one so I can start to use that as kind of the largest element of this smaller embellishment. Let's see if that will work.
Then other things that I might try and duplicate, I have more of those uh, flag tags, so I could use one of those. And let's look at the other pieces from that sassafras sheet that had this large sticker. Is there a smaller piece on here that would work well with the same colors? And I'm actually thinking this red heart, even though there's not hearts in this particular set, it's still enough of a basic shape that it might work quite well. So just trim that down so that I can see the shape and size that, that I have to work with. And then from the labels and the word stickers, look to see if there's anything. I haven't done a specific spot for the date, so that could be a really easy way to add something in. So I'm looking, maybe this green would match well with that green. It's not completely perfect, but I think over the course of the layout that it would work. So I'll put that back on there actually so that I can cut it out instead. And now I have the pieces that I'm going to work with to make something that will coordinate with this but be a smaller, a smaller embellishment when it's all done. So I'll do the edges of this to match all, all the other pieces so that it's consistent throughout the entire layout. And then with the arrows and things like that, I can see from an embellishment where it's going to go on the page even before I've pulled the page out because it should create some sort of shape that frames. So this is creating a corner and wherever I want your eye to go on the page needs to go in that corner. If I were to put the photos over here and put this at the top, the flow is going to be quite awkward. But if I put this in the corner and put my photos over here, your eye is naturally going to go to the photos and then flow onto the embellishment. Or if you're looking from the other side, the other way. Um, it's going to work together rather than fighting against one another. So from that, I know then that I want my other embellishment to be facing the other way because I want to be able to have something on the other side of the page that will face in. So where I have something like an arrow, I want that to be facing that direction inside into the page. So these will be spaced out a bit more on the page, but for right now I can work on them like this and see that I have one that faces that way and one that faces this way or points in those directions. That will help me build all of these pieces together and then it can be useful to figure out which bits can go underneath and on top. So I was seeing if perhaps the better bet would be to put the flag tag on the bottom layer this time, but I think it covers up too much of the shape for it to be clear that it's the same piece. So instead I will repeat putting that on top and I'll use the foam squares again to add that on top of the little journaling card. And I'm just going to let some of that card be visible on the other side. And then I have my date sticker, which I think I won't even need the whole thing. I kind of want it to fit underneath there. So in this smaller piece, it's okay if I overlap quite a bit of this shape because I'm not really concerned about you seeing the entire flower, but more that you get the idea that this design of this sort of pie chart flower is repeating on the page so that your eye will naturally connect them. And it doesn't have to really be a conscious decision and when you're looking at it you don't have to look at a page and think oh that flower is also over there. It's just the similarity between the two shapes will naturally frame anything that's in between. So I'm going to go ahead and stack those pieces on top of that flower there. Then I have the arrow and I'm thinking I can bring that up even further off the page. And I'm just tacking things in place at the moment. So what I'll do is just 
just attach that pop dot that's going to be on the top there. And I'm paying attention to where I can overlap. So instead of putting this a little bit further to the side, I'm overlapping that shape so that it breaks that vertical line and overlaps another element. And it, over here, it's crossing um, not only the, the craft colored tag, but also the label sticker, that journaling box, and the flower. It goes all the way across there. So um, making those pieces overlap as much as possible can really help the composition come together. Then I want um, the, the heart shape in here somewhere. I have this tiny little heart here and I'm looking at different options for where the heart shape could go. So it could go in this bottom corner here. I can space it further out here and I could put it underneath or cover up that little heart and put it here. I have a few different options with this one and at this point I think it it's good to see how um, how it's going to incorporate with the rest of the page. So just like the feather I'm not going to attach it yet I'm just going to keep it loose with that embellishment and um, and be able to finalize the placement when I get it on the page. So now I have two groupings and then my normal technique is to make one smaller third grouping, even smaller than those pieces. So I'm looking for something just really, really small that I can repeat those same colors and patterns and shapes to see um, if I can just add a, a tiny little bit somewhere else on the page so that it will feel very finished. So I'll come back and look at what other elements would match. And I am using stars throughout that book. So even though I used a heart in this one, I'm thinking maybe best to build something around the star because that's something that goes throughout that album. And Doing something that goes throughout an album is is just totally a personal choice. If you like that look, if you like the um, the addition of of a little challenge of incorporating one element on every page within an album, it will um, it'll make your your album look like a cohesive piece, even if you've used different supplies on every page and lots of different colors. So there are some earlier adventures you can have a look like where I um, showed that in my tra I have a travel album where every page is on craft, um, even though all the other supplies differ from page to page, things like that. And um, yeah, I, I, I like how an album can flow with similar styles or similar motifs um, just to make it all come together really easily. So looking for nice small pieces and I'm thinking I'll be able to put stars in all of the pieces because I also have a green star here, I have the little red pennant with the yellow star. So I think I'll save the green star for this one and I'll use that red pennant here with the gold star in the middle because now I don't need to include a craft tag in this one because I've got the craft color here in the star and I have the shape of the tag from there. So I'm looking for elements from that same limited amount of supplies that coordinate and pick up on all the other things that I've included. So having a look at other bits and pieces that are left here on all the different pieces. Go back to the words and the labels and I knew I wanted to incorporate more of that green so a green label would be useful this is the best shape so that I have something horizontal but I'm not going to want that wording so I'm going to go with using that one but already knowing I'm going to cover up that wording and the, the little motif there on the edge that doesn't match what I'm working on so I can take the star and put it right across there. That's going to cover up most of it without any trouble. I can work in this piece to go there. And now I'm looking at this compared to these. I need something that's round because each of these has a round element somewhere. There's a bit of curve. So I'll have a look at what I have. This has that, it's not the flower but it is the blue and it's a similar design because these are flowers that look a little bit like pie charts and that one is a pie chart. So let's try that. I'll add the same ink to pull that all together and then maybe the best bit would be to pop that on top of there, put this star over to one side 
and this one here. With the little one, every time I've used that shape, I've used the pop dots. So I think I will put this one on pop dots too to keep that consistent, even though this is a different type of piece. This one's a sticker and those were cardstock. And I'll plan on making that all overlap. So go ahead and tack the pie chart onto that label. I haven't pulled the backing off the label, but I still can. I'm just going to leave just a little bit showing there. I can't leave much more. Or that motif that I wanted to cover up will be on show, but just a little bit there. And then the star on top of the pie chart. And by covering up the center, it won't be quite so obvious that it's not the flower. And because it could be just like this one that it is the flower, but I covered it up. So just put it slightly off center so that the points are going off the edge. So I'm going over all those layers. At again. this point, I have three clustered embellishments ready to go. So I'm going to take my pictures and my pattern paper that I'd chosen for the background and start to put everything together. Now I wanted to show you my process then for choosing what photos would go with this embellishment because I, I had the idea of what theme, I knew kind of which, um, what what event the photos would be from because I wanted to mix the, the Harry Potter pictures with the, the potion ledger paper. So I have my photos from the potions room at um, at the Harry Potter tour and I had three vertical shots that were in contention but if I used all three in a row like that and then put this on the side to fit the 12 because that's going to be the full page width I'd have to overlap so much that that's not going to work so that's why you'll see me use two so frequently so then there's a case of choosing which two are the two that will stay and there are a few different things to look for. So in each image, there's something that is in focus and something that was that was there on purpose. So this one is a, a general shot of, of the cauldrons and you can see the bottles and the different things. And you can see the book, but the book is really in the foreground and it's quite blurry. So you can't tell specifically what book it is, just that it is a book. This one is a, a wider shot, so it's taken from further away and it includes more of the background wall so you can see what the room itself looked like which was the the set that they used for um, for filming all those scenes so this gives a different kind of perspective even though it's still the same idea of the all the different beakers and things and the the mixing pots and but a different perspective than this image and then in this one you don't get as many bottles and and things like that and you don't have so much of the cauldrons in focus but what is in focus is the book. So you can see that that's the advanced potion making book. And if you've read the, the books or watched the film, you know that that book is quite important to the plot. So I have two different things to think about when I choose which two images I will keep in the page, on the page. The first is the meaning in the photos. So if I want to mention that book in the journaling or if that's important to me then I want to include something like that. Likewise if I want to talk about the whole set I want something that offers that perspective. There's also the idea of choosing what elements can work together with the embellishment. So the embellishment and the layout or, and the photos. So if I were to place these two like this and make this frame I'm going to cover up so much of that photo. I'm going to lose almost everything that has value in, in that picture because this is just adding to the perspective, but you don't get that unless you can see what's here. So if I use this picture, it's not going to be in that placement. What if I swap it over? Well, what I want to do is bring your attention to the book. And by lining these up so that they just barely touch the photo on these two edges here and here, then I am actually drawing your attention into that book because I have that horizontal line that's parallel there and I'm not covering up something that's really meaningful that you can't see in the other picture here. But let's try the other option as well. So I could do these two this could work okay because I'm not 
I'm just covering up the blurry part there. But these two images are very similar and don't give me that perspective here. And if I put this one in instead, I'd lose the idea of the book entirely. So I have all those kind of different options. And I think it's these two that end up being the most important, even though this is kind of a more general shot that shows you everything that was there. These two give me the story that I want to tell, and in this order, with the embellishment at that bottom corner, that works really well for me. So when you see me adding things over the top of the photo, that's the thought process that goes into it for me. I, I want to see what I can do to bring everything together, make sure there are no gaps, I'd like to have everything pushed together on the page, but without losing the meaning that's in the photos. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get started with my background paper. Now, I don't want the haunted house part, and I need to get rid of the strip at the bottom. So I want this paper to be trimmed down to here, and then that means I'll be left with that little bit left over, and I can turn over and use the, the A side, the, the star print there. Trimming this down, I still have the 12 inch width, but it's no longer 12 inches tall. And I want to put some blue at the top of the page. This is... a a blue kind of textured solid that's the back of this multicolored stripe that's from um, Ready Set Go, the Amy, new Amy Tangerine. So I want to put these together to make a 12 by 12 page. So I'm just going to take a sheet of cardstock so that I have something to make sure it's going to end up at 12 by 12. So I can put that at the top of the page there and then add my adhesive here and then I also put adhesive here if I'm not going to put a full 12 by 12 page in the back and um, I do tend to go ahead and, and add a whole page but normally I would just cut a little frame all the way around the whole edge but with this ledger I really wanted the whole piece so it just didn't work well with the frame because um, I like the black edging to that so there's my new 12 by 12 page and then everything is going to be built on top of that. So I also have that strip of the star print left over from the ledger. So I'll have that to use in a little bit and I have my photos to start. So I had the idea for where they're going to be placed in that order and I can take those clusters that I've created and figure out how everything is going to fit. So I want to make sure that there's going to be plenty of room because the biggest problem with creating clusters and then putting them on the page is that it's very easy to create more than 12 inches of stuff to put on the page. So I want to make sure that everything will fit before I start gluing things down. So that's my placement. I'll leave that one sitting there so that I can attach the first photo. The ledger makes it really easy to just follow along then because I have that nice straight line all planned out for me. Match up the photos and then come back to this embellishment. So now I can peel off that sticker backing add adhesive to the pieces that are still paper. I want to leave this edge free where I know I'm going to tuck the flower in. So I still put adhesive there, but just leaving this kind of gap here so that it'll be possible to tuck it all underneath there. And then I want to look at this edge and this edge so that I get that placement as perfect as I can. So I can overlap just the slightest bit. Everything fits on the page. And then I can come back in here with my feather and make that go right to the edge. And then I can have the top overlap. So the bottom can go underneath. The top can overlap on top of all the other elements which gives me a bit more dimension down here. So I'll just add a foam square to keep that flower attached, but not smashed down on the page. So nothing's getting bent. And with the feather, 
just add the adhesive directly to the background. And then pop that all into place. So that's the first one attached. Then I have my other two and I need to figure out where they're going to go and how they're going to work. So I have two other horizontal lines on this page. Now I had the one from the bottom of the photo where I used um, this grouping. I also have this one at the top of the photo and this one at the top of the ledger paper. So my instinct then is to add my groupings on those horizontal lines, but I wanted to make sure I didn't cover up that wording that I wanted to keep from the paper. This I'm okay to overlap some things up here, and I still have that heart sticker if I decide to put that one in. So from here I can just pull off the backing, and it, once again I'm looking for things I can overlap, so I need to pull the paper off the back of this pop dot and add some adhesive to the paper part. So I want this arrow to go over that little black line at the edge and it's all going to go over the top of the photo ever so slightly. And then with this one same thing, I need to add adhesive to the pieces that are paper, take off the backs of pop dots and the stickers. And then I can work the placement so that I'm overlapping all those things and bringing the blue together with the ledger paper, but not covering up the wording that made me like the ledger paper in the first place. So that's kind of my basic plan when I'm using three clusters of embellishment. From here on out, I'm then working on top of all those elements. I have journaling to include, I have a title to include, and I'm going to want to add smaller elements on top of the embellishment to bring things together. For example, remember I had a star here and I had stars in this one, but I don't have any stars in this grouping yet. So that's going to be the first thing I'll add while I'm thinking of it, is to go back and bring in that green star from the sticker sheet and I can make it point to the star or I could bring the star up here. I think I like that ever so slightly better. So now each one has some green, each one has a star, they're starting to have things in common. But then I can just, when, once I've worked in my major elements, so I'll do the title and the writing next, then I'll come in with smaller things. For example, on these sticker sheets that I pulled out at the beginning, I have all those little words. I could see if there's anything that, that, sort, that um, applies in there, and those are easy to, to just sprinkle along. Or I could add gems, pearls, um, washi tape, anything like that that will just kind of finish things off. So I'm going to go ahead and get my writing um, in place and use my square thickers for the title. Very nearly done at this point. I've added my title with the thickers at the top and a bit of writing here and then some more down at the bottom of the page. And in a way this page kind of has two sections of writing and two titles. And um, up here the different things that we're seeing in this room or this set. And then here the ordinary day uh, die cut really made me want to include something that we kept talking about when we walked through the tour, which was that although this was something really special and magical to us, this was a normal, ordinary work day for so many people who worked on the films for all those years. And we kind of had trouble imagining what that would be like to just think, oh, I'm off to work and that's where you're going, where the rest of us uh, had more traditional ideas of work and so I tried to write those thoughts here and then use that die cut to to kind of bring those thoughts together. So it does kind of have a little bit of a different twist there in that there are 
two sections to the writing, but I think in the terms of the full album, when you turn from page to page, that will help everything make a bit more sense and helps include both the details of what's in the photos and what we were feeling at the time. Now, then there are just a few last little things that I want to add to make everything finished. Remember, this had the wording for tomorrow on that little tab, so I just took two small stickers from the same supplies that I've been using and covered up that wording added some little letter stickers. These are from the um, inside the Amy Tangerine daybook, the one with the little bicycle on the front. Some of the, the daybooks have different sticker sheets and the one with the bicycle has the little mini alphabet. So um, now I'm just looking for places where I might want to add a little finishing touch and I tend to look for places where there are open spaces that don't feel like they should be open. Now I did have that heart sticker that I pulled out from before but I'm not convinced on using that. I think um, where I have lots of rec rectangles and circles and then brought in the flowers, the feather, and the stars and the arrows. I think hearts is just one shape too many. So I'm going to leave that off for now. I do think that this little bit of open space bothers me a bit where this string from the tag is going to come up to the top and I end up with this gap here. So I had a quick look at the stickers that I had out and there's this little border sticker here that brings all those colors together in a really subtle way. So I just thought if I can slip the end underneath here and go right to the bottom of that letter, then that just gives me a little extra detail. Could also use washi tape or anything like that, but I just thought that would help this not look quite such an awkward gap to me. Of course, none of this is necessary. It's all just for fun, so that's and um, that's part of the process. So I just go back and try and find tiny little things that I can put in amongst all of that. And I think for today, I will call this one done. So I hope that that has helped you. And today, your challenge this week is, of course, to find some of your supplies and see how they fit together. Look for different shapes and colors that you can repeat into different groupings and try building them into your embellishments. Then mix it with whatever photos, whatever supplies you want to use and in your own style and share your project with us in the gallery. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.